Hi, and welcome to another episode of Monster Model Review. I'm Rob Madison, and this week I'm going to show you how I made my Finking Carbonite. But I don't have any extra Fink, so I'm going to have to go a different route. But I wanted to show you this simple, quick, easy weekend project I did a couple weekends ago, and basically just used foam core, uh, some plaster Paris, a model kit of the Mother's Worry Fink Kit, which you would see behind me if I would move, and some the plaster was for the Carbonite. And then the dots are just little half pearls from scrapbooking. Very, very simple, very easy to do. Um, for this kit, I'm going to do a couple different things. For this one, I did some siding. And really, I just used some washers and half pearls to make those. I didn't want to put a lot of effort into it. I wanted just to use what was on hand and not have to dig through a bunch of stuff. I did find this one tubing, which was a model part. Um, I'm going to replace that with a different piece for what we're going to do today. But um, basically, we're just going to do a simple build up on how to do a creature in carbonite. And again, you could sculpt your own creature. Um, but what I did was I took a model kit, a mother's worry, kind of decided where I wanted it. And instead of having to use the whole kit and fill the whole thing up, I cut it in half a little bit and then hot glued it in place and put it all together. And I'm going to show you how to do that, but I'm not going to use the vent, like I said. So. This time, I'm going to actually make a couple of my Aurora buddies real happy, or maybe sad, but we're going to use the Aurora Frankenstein. I found enough pieces in my uh, model supply. I've got a box of old model supplies and stuff like that that um, I just keep bits and pieces around because you'll never know when you're going to need a, a Frankenstein or Dracula, Wolfman, or Mummy. And uh, the parts always come in handy, like this one did. So the first thing I did was, like in all modeling, there's kind of that engineering kind of aspect where you kind of set it on a table, read the instructions, and look at it for a week. Am I going to do this in subsections, or how am I going to do this? But so um, the same is true for any craft I, project I do. I usually just throw a bunch of stuff on the table and spend the week or weekend kind of judging what I want to do with it, what I think would be easy, what I can get away with. Because a lot of what I do doesn't have to look perfect. It just has to, I just want to do something for fun. So with Frankenstein, I built him up. I didn't do a lot of seam work to him because I'm going to be putting plaster of Paris over most of him anyway, um, just to give him that carbonate kind of feel to him. I know I'm going to bury him up to the crack on his head anyway and up pretty much to his body. So, But we do have these hands coming up, and that was totally Scott's idea. I was actually going to set the arms down a little bit and make them like that, but Scott said that, and that's an exact... A uh, really cool thing to do, kind of like he was trying to get out at the same time. This foot's going to set up about an uh, inch, I would guess, half an inch. And I was missing a boot, or I didn't really want to use a full boot um, out of my parts pit thing. Or uh, not out of my parts pit, but that's a good place to go when you're looking for parts to do something like that. And that's where I got my fink kits from, actually. Um, the parts pit, so don't forget to look that up. So um, I didn't want to use a boot, so I just shoved this boot in some clay and put a little Vaseline on it and put some two-part uh, clear cheap uh, resin in there and made just the tip of a boot in case I want to use that for the lower part coming up. But we'll see. I might bury it far enough where it won't even show. And if that's the case, it really doesn't matter. But I wanted to have it on hand in case I wanted it to peek out just a little bit uh, where this one will be above the uh, carbonate thing. So to get started, basically you take your piece um, I already cut mine in parts, so I cut the back off to make it more flat. I cut this leg, we used to go down to there, I cut that to make that flat too. And I didn't use his back leg at all, because it wasn't going to matter and it's just going to fill up. So I can get rid of those parts now and just throw those away. Um, but now I have a Frankenstein that kind of lays flat, and um, I'll hot glue him down to the base. So once you get that done... The next goal is to really find out how big you want, you're going to want this to be. So you got to kind of measure, you know, where, you know, how high do you want the carbonite to be? Do you want it to be, um, you know, a lot of space around him or not a lot of space around him? So I basically did, a, I, I cut about five inches. First I cut five and a half inches and then I kind of looked at him and I thought he just had too much space and I wanted to keep it tighter. So it would just be a nice wall hanging kind of thing when I'm done. So, uh, luckily, these uh, 11 by 17, or no, I'm sorry, uh, 8 and a half by 11 sheets, I decided to go 11 inches high, or 
yep, 11 inches high. So that was easy to determine. And then I just had to determine my width. Take a straight ruler and make the cut with your X-Acto knife. The cool thing about this project is there's not a whole lot of stuff to you need to make it. I use tacky glue. You can also use Elmer's white glue or Mod Podge. I use all three of them for different reasons. Um, I'll be using some white glue, I'm sure. Um, if uh, This stuff is a little thicker and uh, it sticks right away, but again, it's thicker where white glue is or Elmer's glue or whatever you want to call it is a little watered down so you can make little droplets a little easier, especially when we're doing the uh, half pearls along for the rivet thing. That's the, really the time consuming part is doing the rivets. Um, the other things you're going to need is, of course, your trusty hobby knife. Um, basically, um, outside of the spray paint, we're going to use black spray paint to prime everything. Um, I have an old beat up silver that I'm trying to use up, and I got some black in case I miss some of the priming stuff. I'll hit it with this, but really for uh, in carbonite, this is really all you need. Uh, one other thing that I thought I would try to do maybe is put a little bit of uh, bronze or a little gold in it and just the carbonite not the outside thing keep that steel and silver looking and we'll rust it out too so we will use a little um, kind of a rust color red brown a uh, red and orange kind of color to rust it up and make it look old and, and chintzy and and uh, the cool thing is is when you get sloppy you actually make things look realistic that way so it's kind of fun to do so we will use just like one or two colors past that but really not very many uh, mostly a big brush to dry brush all the steel on there and uh, um, that'll be all, pretty much all you need. For the uh, side pieces, if, if I'm going to use two of the big half pearls, which I will, I'll do a red and green for uh, the Frankenstein kit too. I'll generally spray paint those just because it's smoother and it looks good and I can just take it outside, put it on a, a piece of tape and spray paint one green, spray paint one red and I got a nice little clean uh, red and green thing for uh, my thing and if I was going to do these buttons I'd probably do the same thing but I kind of like the pearl buttons left alone I think they look fine without having any color on it but if I was going to color them I'd probably put them on two sided tape take them outside and spray paint them out there so I always do my spray painting outside because it's toxic and I don't have a lot of ventilation downstairs outside of the room my uh, digital printer's in so um, basically you get started by measuring things and again we're going to do five inches and we're going to cut from there. So instead of five inches, I'm going to do five and a half inches. I was going to cut five, and then when I kept looking at it, I was afraid I was going to get too tight on his shoulders. Because that's one thing that I always have a problem with is, is how much space is from the hands, not the shoulder, because his hands come out a little bit more. So I changed my mind. I'm going to go look like a little more like five and a half inches. So let me move some of the stuff out of the way. We'll get Frankie over here. We'll keep his company. A little judge us. And we'll uh, find the little hash marks I made at five mark uh, inches, five and a half inches. Um, all I do is just make a little dash with my knife, because I know I'm going to have to cut into it anyway. So I might as well just use that. So then, holding it straight and holding it tight, I'm going to make my first cut. And again, I'm going to make it so this one is going to be 11 inches by five and a half, because that's what's going to fit Frankenstein or uh, Frankenstein's monster better in carbonate and again that's our goal so this is a little bit thicker the black uh, styrofoam or the black foam core is a little bit thicker than the uh, white stuff so and that's why I tend to like it a little bit better I like to use the white stuff for filler and the black stuff I use for just about everything if I'm going to make a, di a base or a diorama or anything I go with this just because it's a lot tougher than the white stuff um, and I know you can get different grades of both, but I tend to get my hands on this uh, pretty cheap. So, again, I'm going to use that, and there it is. There's kind of my layout for where Frankenstein's going to lay. I'm going to lay him in there, make sure that I like where he's going to be, and um, I'm ready to go. So, the next thing I need to do is I could sit there and cut out a whole bunch of rectangles and then cut out the insides. But I really don't have to do that. Um, it's a lot more work trying to be straight and narrow that way. When in fact, I can just cut strips, glue them up, glue them together. And then when I want to, if I want to fix them all and make them all the same, I just go out to the saw in my garage and clean up the edges really quick and really fast with the uh, circular saw. So um, I'm going to, instead of doing this, um, 
this thing, I'm going to do a bunch of strips. So one thing you need to do too, is when you're looking at Frankenstein, and you can see at this better angle that um, he's going to be flat, we got to figure out how many pieces it's going to take to do it. So I cut a bunch of strips, and first thing we'll do is decide how many we do. So we can go one. And four's looking good, but maybe not as much as I wanted to. Five I like, but I think, I think, There'll be still too much body above. So I'm going to go six high. So I'm going to cut enough to make six levels high of this and six levels high of here. So we'll cut out some more of those. So now we have pretty much everything cut out that we need cut out. Um, what I'm going to do now is kind of clean up and we're going to get the hot glue gun out and I'm just going to hot glue everything kind of together. First I'm going to do is I'm going to do the strips. I did make one cutout one like this that I could just use for the top. It's pretty straight. It's not as straight as I'd like it to be, but for the demonstration purposes, I think this one will be fine. But this one would be the top one that'll hold everything together. And I won't have those edges to putty up if I, if I felt like I needed to. So it'll give me a little bit cleaner edge. Uh, again, I wish it was a little straighter there. I, I can figure that out later. But I think it'll work out fine. So I'm going to start by gluing the four pieces of stuff together, or five pieces of each side together. And I'm going to do that with hot glue. And I'm going to kind of do it tight. And, and the reason I have to do it tight is because I'm going to be running plaster of Paris in there too. And so in order for the plaster not to leak out of every one of these, I'll do a good bead of hot glue on this. And um, get it all glued up, and then I can figure that out, and that's where Frankenstein's going to set. All right, so that kind of builds up our edges, and we have this one here. So now I'm going to just take my edges and I'm going to glue them flat to the edge. Um, they should be exactly the same. So. And that's basically our carbonate. So I made a little case. This is where Frankenstein's going to go. We can actually hot glue him down pretty much right now if we wanted to. Because now the only thing I'm going to do is fill up space in there. So I'm going to pick where I want Frankenstein. Right square in the middle. And I'm just going to run a bead of glue on his head on his sides, on his butt, and we're going to place him where we want him. So the next thing we can do with Frankenstein, since he's pretty solid in place and he's got his little, little house there, we can fix these edges up really quick. And the way I do it with my rat fink, uh, or with the mother's worry fink, is I just use masking tape. And you can kind of tell, but it's painted steel, so it still looks heavy and it still looks like steel. Um, I also painted a coat of white glue over it to make it give it a little extra oomph to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to give really good edges by just cheating a little bit and using some tape. And since the uh, bottom's not going to be seen all that much, we're going to have the, uh, the uh, filler on the bottom. So there we go. I'm just going to set it to the edge. And once I get it to the edge... I will push it down. And you'll see some grooves and stuff, but I think that adds to the character of the build. It's kind of like adding that old metal texture, because this would have been done somewhere else in a galaxy far, far away. So, you know what? 
I can get away with that. The cool thing is, is once that tape's done, I don't really have to worry about my edges anymore. They're just going to be what they're going to be, and I am going to put um, uh, rivets on there. And the cool thing is, is I can just cut my corners. Do that one. I'll end up cutting that one up. But once I cut my corners, I can fold it back. Get a nice clean edge to it. And there we go. And again, we're just folding the, the tape back. This is my new side. So this side I'm actually going to trim with an exacto knife to try to get it just perfectly tight right there. So we're going to take an exacto knife. So we got a kind of oh, there we go, and then we'll just fold this last piece in there. And that should not go anywhere ever again. So again, I'm just using tape to clean my edges off. You could do this any other way. You, I was thinking of putting foam core this way too, but then that would just add more, you know, to this thing. So there's a million different ways to do these kind of things, and this is not necessarily the right way to do it, but this is the way I did it, and this is the way I found it to be just super easy and to do it. Um, things that I had laying around the house. And again, that's just a big old strong duct tape, kind of like the Gorilla, or this is T-Rex, I believe, T-Rex tape. And I feel it's strong enough, it's not gonna go anywhere. It gives me a nice clean edge. So I have that clean edge going all over, the, all through it, and I'm pretty much built up on the sides. So that's gonna lend me to when I have to do the half pearls as rivets on the side, or the um, special, you know, the cool stuff that has to go on the side too. Because something's got to run this Frankenstein and carbonate, it's not going to just run itself. So the next part, as you can see, would be to start doing rivets. Rivets along the front here, and rivets on the side, just to make it look like a big metal box. And it's still going to be light enough. And again, we could have left Frankenstein out, but he's not going to be in my way. Or the monster, I should say. Um, but he's not going to be in my way at all. So I'm, I'm just going to go with him as is and start measuring for rivets. So I'm going to go, I think, a quarter inch in. And then I'm going to look at centimeters just to see how many ones I can put on this thing in centimeters. Because centimeters and millimeters tend to work a little bit better when it comes to this kind of aspect. So I'm going to start at my quarter and go quarter, and then we're just going to go a centimeter down the road. So there we go. I know I'm going to need 28 rivets along the side, and then we're going to rivet across here, and again we're going to do a quarter inch. Rivet, right about there, quarter inch, quarter inch, that should be good. And we're going to do the same thing right here. And hopefully it'll end on a good note. So there we go. Um, this is really where centimeters really do come in handy. Because you can just find your spot and go with them. Yeah. Now we know where all of our rivets are going to go. We're also going to put rivets on the sides, but I don't have to measure as well, and I might use bigger rivets because it's just a bigger piece of metal, where this one's being held on by these smaller rivets. So then it's all about white glue and rivets. So now we're going to start the riveting. And you can see I got a bunch of half pearls here. I hope I have enough to do all the rivets around the edges. I'm also using uh, tacky glue, which is uh, just a thick like white glue, like Elmer's glue. And I got a little bit on there, I use a dental tool, and I just make a couple marks with it, where I scrape a little dab up, make a mark, make a mark, make a mark, make a mark, make a mark. And then, using the tweezers, we're going to place them. Yeah. 
and we're going to continue that process. So then what I'm going to do is I measured a quarter inch off of each corner, quarter inch at five and a half because this is 11 inches, and then I'll do, I'm going to do rivets there. And I'll also do that to the other side, and I'll put two on the top, probably not in the center. So there, I'm going to do that, I'm going to flip it. Um, I, I want to make some junk for the side to make it look like it's like it's working in some way and I wanted it to look a little retro because you know it's uh, the Frankenstein monster and not Han Solo so what I did um, for the rat thing or for mother's worry is I just took washers to have it raise up and then I use half pearls and stuff like that just to make it look kind of what it is so I'm kind of doing the same thing I'm going to use two half pearls big ones to make the on and off switch but I'm using from the old gruesome goodie set from Aurora. There's this um, front of a, a lab equipment that I had multiples of. So I was able to cut one up and use some of that. So again, I added some pearls to it and uh, made it look a little bit better. I cut it into a square to make it fit better and so I can put it the way I want it. And then I can lay that like right there. And I took another part of that, where at which I cut off. And I can use that and I'm going to actually put some little little pearls on there too But I'm going to wait until we paint it so it'll look uh, they'll look just like pearls and not like metal and stuff And then I took some washers and just another piece of a random um, Ship model kit and I'm going to put that I believe there And I'm going to put these two half pearls Right here one red and one green and one here and why I didn't use the tweezers I'll never know but and that'll be like the on off switch so that's kind of what I'm, I'm working on there and I'm going to glue those in place and just let those set so taking the side here it's a nice clean side I like doing everything on the that side I don't know why but I tend to do that with all of these I do it with the pink too I'm going to drill two holes and I'm going to use this just tubing with um, a washer on each end and some tape making it a little bit bigger to hold on the washer. And that'll look kind of cool like it's being held on to. So I drilled some holes that'll fit in both of those. So I'm going to use white glue, glue those in. I'm going to put some glue around the edges here. And here. And this might have been better with hot glue there, to be honest with you. But I feel that, that that'll work out fine for this. And we're going to go in. And we're going to hope those just hold. We could get rubber bands to hold those down too. Now I'm going to move this guy on. And this is actually an old uh, Warhammer thing for probably a Predator tank, I'm guessing. I'm going to put that right about there. Center it. In case I want to put the words on and off, which I doubt. I'm going to take this bigger piece. I 
think I decided I wanted the dials on top. So there's that. And one more. And this will stick out a little bit. And again, I'm going to use uh, some pearls on there after we're all done. Um, it's just to make them look like little buttons and things you can push. And again, we're going to rust it out. We're going to make it look old and rusty. And uh, I think I like that. So I have to let that dry for a little bit. But um, so all the things are dry on the side here. And, um, you know, every time I look at it, I know that it would have only taken like a printout and two pieces of cardstock to kind of make what it looked like in the movie. But again, I like to kind of time it to the time it's going to be in. And another thing is the gear that or the uh, turn handle I'm using. Um, that part's from a Warhammer thing, then a couple washers, then another piece. Uh, I got a half button on here. But the turn thing, again, is from the gruesome goodies that uh, I cut off of the same piece from that. And then that. So the next thing we have to do, really, is um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the um, cavity up with a little bit more foam core, just some scraps and stuff. And I'm going to hot glue it down. I'm just going to kind of fill up the area around it, and really that's just to save, you know, room for the plaster, so I don't have to put so much plaster in it, and it won't be so heavy. Um, it keeps it a lot lighter if you do it that way, instead of it being a really, you know, big, heavy piece of plaster of Paris that's going to take a month to dry inside. I'm going to really just kind of fill it up to about that size, you know, a little bit less than that, so I can sculpt the plaster of Paris up on that thing, which I have to do by hand. So we're going to do that. But first, I'm going to spend some time cutting some uh, old styrofoam core, uh, foam core that I get uh, in piles, actually, because it's usually just trimmed off stuff uh, from my workplace. But I use it, and I can just um, uh, uh, hot glue it in there and just kind of fill it up a little bit just to save some plaster of Paris dry time and, and plaster of Paris and weight. So yeah, so you can see that there's just a lot of space in here. And I'm just going to cut rectangles and squares and try to fit them in there and squeeze them in there. If he pops out, I can always hot glue him back in because he's just hot glued in there. But um, So that's kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of just work around his body really quickly with some foam core and a hobby knife and just kind of rough it out. I don't have to measure anything. I'm really just kind of filling space. So I know with this foot, I'm going to want to do something to make it look like the carbonite is trying to hold his foot in and it's kind of smearing down so between the hot glue or I might just take a piece of uh, foam core and, and just glue it down like that just so the um, carbonate or plaster of Paris has something to really hold on to and then I can drip down from it and artistically make it cool and I might do that all the way down his leg um, but really just kind of roughed it out and just with um, with hot glue and hot glue makes everything a little bit easier i think so um, i'm just going to cut some chunks up i think i've got one here that'll probably fit there and you can see how i'm already going to be filling space up with this stuff so then i can put another one there and just hot glue it down and i don't have to be clean about it because i'm going to be dumping plaster of paris in there too and so we'll start doing it that way so i'm going to pull that back out because i'm going to try to glue everything as i go and again it doesn't have to be pretty. So you can see right here, I took some white and I just built up under his boot to make it so the carbonate or the plaster of Paris, of course, would, would drip down it better and make it look more like he's trying to pull his leg out. So that's kind of what I'm doing there. And then I'll continue just putting white strips in there until I get it up to about um, a little underneath this, this ridged one here. Because that's kind of where I want the carbonite to end and pull some up over it and make it look kind of cool that way. So I'm just going to continue uh, filling it up until it's about, you know, maybe three quarters of an inch, a half inch higher. Maybe to that cut line on his head. You can see that I got my foam core. It's kind of all put in place. 
Um, that's going to save me a lot of plaster and a lot of weight because I just want this to be a simple wall hanging and it's going to be fairly light because it's really made out of just foam core. Um, but that top layer is going to be plaster. So I, I don't need a whole lot of plaster and I know it's going to seep in there. So I'm probably going to make more than I want. I'm probably going to make a cup and a half of plaster for this piece. And you know, if there's not enough, it's easy because I just wait for it to dry and then I mix a little bit more and then I can kind of do that detail work. But the one thing about using the plaster is it's all about the detail work. So when the plaster goes in there, you've only got a certain amount of time before it dries. So during that time, I'm using the end of a paintbrush and I'm pulling and pushing and pulling and pushing and making those gouges that you see in the carbonite. Like the creature was done uh, in mid, um, I don't know, he's trying to escape. But, um, and it looks like a liquid being kind of stretched and dried. So when you're doing the plaster, you're just constantly kind of working it like that. Um, but it usually dries pretty quickly. So all I do is mix it up, pour it in, kind of do this till the bubbles kind of seep out. I have a, I'll go get a glass of water so I can keep everything wet because that'll make it a smoother finish. And I'll be pulling with my brush on the, on the plaster to bring it up like it's trying to, you know, freeze out or something like that. So I'm going to kind of do that to that. Plus I'm going to do it to the character. Plus I got a whole beat up brush so I can brush some on the character and start building up by this foot, which might take a couple of times to do it um, because I want that plaster to look like it's being stretched, like the monster's pulling his foot up. I also have this half a foot that I made. I might glue it right there. I don't know if we're going to end up seeing it in the long run, but um, I made that resin half foot there. So I, I'm going to glue it right there. And that way there's that little bump of his toe coming in from his left foot. Um, again, I don't want to try to cover too much. So I'm probably going to keep away from his face and his body until the last moment. And then I'll start, you know, dealing with it, um, which you'll see in close up. So um, what I'm going to do is kind of let this cool down. And I'm going to go get some water some plaster and measure it out and we'll mix her up and start the real fun part of it. Actually, I think painting is the fun part of it, but um, this is the tricky part for me. If you can get, if you can get through this part of it, the rest of it is super, super easy. So I think the first part is just kind of time consuming because you're doing the rivets and stuff like that and figuring out what you want to do on your edge. Um, the next part, you know, um, filling it up isn't too bad. Um, the plaster is really where it comes in because if you screw it all up there, it's done. Um, luckily, we hope that won't happen. So we'll find out. But again, oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to hot glue that foot down. Just so we have that one foot poking right there. And that's again that resin cast that I made and I just put that resin little toe sticking out. So you can kind of see it right about there. Um, like it's going to be buried pretty much anyway. So we got our plaster. We got our water. This is one to five to one. I think I got too much water in here and that's what I was trying to do. I'm going to dump it in here. I'm going to stir it slowly to try not to get a whole lot of bubbles. So I hope, I think this is more than enough. In fact, I think this is way too much. So I'm going to dump most of it in, but not probably all of it. Because I don't think I need that much. And these are those cool mix and measure kind of things. And I can tell I got a couple there. So again, this is one and a half to one. Um, I didn't do it all. So I'm going to do a little less water in it. I can always add water in it if I need more. So I am going to dump some in. And I'll just start working that nice and slowly. If I can tell it's going to get too thick right away. And you can usually tell um, plaster is going to get too thick right away because it gets thick right away. Like you can't even start breaking it up. But this looks like it's going to be pretty good. Maybe a little runny, but I can add some of that back into it. And that's kind of what I was hoping for. I don't mind doing that, but I'm going to store it slowly. I'm not going to be real vigorous on it because I don't want to create more air bubbles than I have to. And I'm going to be able to pound some of those out um, just by using vibration and stuff like that um, in both the container and in, in the uh, Frankenstein um, um, cabinet. So I'm just stirring it up. I can feel there's a thickness to it. Feels a lot like um, pancake batter when you're getting more crepey, more um, thin. Not those big thick ones. 
So I think I'm fairly stirred up pretty good. Um, I seem to be you know, a little thin. I can add a little more if I want, or I could go with this, but I think I'll add just a touch more. And that's why it's good to have some around just to be able to play with it, make it right. So I'm gonna stir that part in. And it already feels a little bit thicker. So again, I don't wanna to be too vigorous because the air bubble is gonna be a problem if I do. But I'm gonna go like that. And again, if I didn't make enough, um, I'll be able to fix that with the second coat. Um, but I'm hoping this coat makes it. And that's stirred up pretty good. Let me get me a towel here. Kleenex off to the side so I can set this down. And we'll come back to that. All right, so we got our plaster in there. And I'm just going to start dumping it in. And this is where I, I'm hoping my waterproofing kind of worked. And again, I know I'm going to have some space underneath them. Oh, I'm going to need to make a lot more, it looks like. So that's going to be our first hit with the plaster. I guess I underestimated how much was going to be in and under the creature. I'm going to spread it out this way. And what I'm doing is spreading out the carbonate just to get a good layer in there. Get it in all the cracks and crevices that we can. We'll see where we're at once we get this kind of all laid out. I might even start to be able to play a little bit, but I know I'm going to have to do another coat in there because it's just simply not going to be enough. But this is a really good start, and I think I'm still going to be able to do a lot of stuff by bringing this up. But you can tell there's not a lot on here. It's just kind of filling the cracks up. So I'm going to continue to fill up the cracks just so the next layer I don't have to work with the cracks. And I'll take a little bit with my brush and add to some of those areas where I know I want it more affected with the plaster. Yeah, I think I'll make a whole nother, uh, another cup and a half to two cups it, it looked like that I had to use. And again, I can paint over them because it's going to look like that. And one thing about doing two coats is you can kind of add some of those, that streakiness that we know we're going to get when the monster pulls his foot out. Um, we're going to have to build some of that up. And usually I'll do it with my brush and just go like this. But I need a little more in there to be able to really do this well. But even the collar of the shirt, we're going to want that to pull up there. And the collar of his arm, we're going to want to build that up a little bit. And on the sides, we'll build the sides up too, but not until we get a little more plaster in here. So let's just let her wait. It's gonna take a little while to dry, probably a half hour, I think, total. And so once that's all dry, I'll come back and we'll mix up another batch. Okay, the first thing of plaster is pretty dry. Um, again, I just kind of filled it up. But one thing I wanted to look at is here on the, on the leg and uh, over here, there's a crack too. And I felt that I could just take the hot glue gun and kind of fill up that area with hot glue because it can kind of look snarly. And when I'm doing it, if I want to and I feel like I'm brave enough to, you can always make these little strings. And the strings kind of look cool in the carbonate. So again, I'm, I'm kind of hitting down below here where his leg is hitting the carbonate to try to give it already kind of a, a wet feel to it. So. It doesn't look like that just square um, um, cardstock I, I put on there. So I'm just going to fill that up with glue. And as soon as the glue cools, we can, um, we can start doing it again. And again, you can have the streaks come up. Streaks working coming up. That'll be a, a good touch when you... You have things just kind of bring it up like that and again this is kind of a frozen substance so you're gonna to want to fill it up so you can see over here 
then I did a lot of glue and I just squirted it all over there and I squirted it all over here just to give it a dripping sensation from the get-go. I also filled up a crack right here that uh, um, I just didn't need any more plaster to go down. And then it's pretty dry. So once that hot glue kind of cools down, um, I can mix some more plaster up and do that next round. And remember, the next round I'm gonna have to really work because that's gonna be the, the, the stuff you're gonna see after that. And that's how we're gonna try to make it look. And uh, the same as this guy. And we'll see how we can do. We're gonna do our second coat. And I hope I did enough. I'm not 100% sure I did. But I'm just going to start pouring it in. And if I need more, I might just make it really quickly on the spot. But I'm going to pour that in. And as you can tell, there's a lot more coming through. Um, again, I don't want it to go over his head. So I'm going to just let a little bit go that way. Go that way. And let that kind of coat in there. And keep that kind of good. But you can see that we can just start messing it up. Get some down there. Get some through here. There we go. And this is where that part's going to be, where it's going to look like it's coming out of there, like his foot is. So we're going to want to drag some of that up there and get it all good. But drag some up so it looks like the stripes are coming up on it. So it's like he's trying to crawl out of this mess. So again, I'm painting the hot glue, painting the boot, painting the resin boot I made down here which looks like it might come in handy because I can see it. And I'm going to start pulling things up a little bit on the sides here. Um, it gives it that little, you know, like we're filling space kind of thing. And again, I can move it like this and shift some of this down. If I got too much and I need some more, I can just do that. Oopsie. Let's see, you can't see one. So this is where we're going to really want to kind of just kind of hit things and, and let it slop off and see how that all pans out when it's all said and done. This is all that trial and error stuff. This is where things can go great or not so great. But you know what? You don't have a lot of cost into it and it's just for fun. It really doesn't matter. We'll bring some stripes up. Make it look like he's trying to get out of there. Do it on both sides. Make it look like he's stretching. So this is where you can try to get it so it's looking good. So there's stuff running down his face, but you don't want too much. We're going to lose a little bit of Frankie if we do too much. So again we're going to try to maybe take the wet brush and um, add some to the edges make sure I've got both sides but I'm going to try to keep the texture of this main part kind of cleaner so we can um, paint that up and have some details so we know it's Frankie and uh, we'll do fine. And, uh, the hard part is really adding some streaks and you know making it look like like the, uh, the stuff is coming out of his mouth and out of his eyes maybe and then getting some just some edging in. I'm going to keep my brush wet when I do this. And that way I'm trying to get that silky smoothness there. As you can see, I'm trying to get it a little wet so that I can create these grooves like he's pulling out 
kind of trying his best to. You can already see that it's drying here. So I'm just kind of pulling lines through it. And I'm going to come back with a uh, wet brush. So really, it's just a matter of kind of keeping things going. And again, being sloppy is kind of the story in this thing. So you can see that once it's spray painted, it's going to look pretty cool. So we're going to let this dry overnight and we'll come back to it. Well, all right. It took a couple coats of plaster in there, but you can tell uh, we got it all kind of messed up and goofed up. And the Frankenstein monster is kind of coated. He's covered up to about there. He looks like he's trying to get out. So really, now all we have to do is let this dry overnight. We're gonna let it dry, make sure it's really dry. Then we're gonna spray paint it black. We'll start um, spray painting the little um, half pearls for the side. And once we spray paint it black, the painting is by far the easiest and fastest part of this whole process. So if you made it this far already, you're doing great and I thank you for it. But um, I think it's turning out pretty good. It's a little rougher than the Fink. But that's okay. I think it's cooler because the monster looks like he's really trying to burst out of there. And again, that was a good idea from Scott Johansson from Model uh, Club TV. When we were talking, he, he brought up the arm thing. I was, again, going to put them down, but I didn't. So I think this is turning out pretty good. We're going to give it a night to dry, and we will see you after it's dry. We'll spray paint it black with flat black primer. And then we'll just dry brush it up. And that's really all it's going to take outside of a couple little teeny details for the side. All right, so the plaster was dry. So last night I hit it, you know, late last night I hit it with some black spray primer, uh, flat primer. And so I primed it all up and I just used regular black acrylic to fix any holes that uh, where the uh, black spray paint didn't hit. So um, I got it all pretty much nice and solid here. It's pretty ready to go. I've got a couple more colors than I said originally because I do want to rust, uh, add rust to it. So I, I do have this terracotta and some dark brown and a lot of, just a spot of black in that. And that's going to be the rust to make it look older. I grabbed a couple different metals. One, I, I want to add just a dab of silver when I get to near the end to kind of make the carbonate look a little bit different than the steel edge. So I grabbed a, a couple of golds and kind of a bronze. I got my old silver and that's what I'm going to try to use up during this thing. White for the um, detail on the side over here. And some red in case I need it somewhere for any of the gears or dials that, um, that I've forgotten about. But for the most part, I'm just going to dry brush this whole thing. Silver. Um, I also have some tape. I'm going to just pull the tape out and I'm going to make it two-sided by making a roll and adding those um, pieces that I want to spray paint outside. So I'm going to take that piece like that, go like that, and take those half pearls that I'm going to paint one red and one green outside just to hit it with spray paint just with a, a rattle can. And that just gives these things, the pearls that will be the on and off buttons on the, on the side here, a little more uh, finish to uh, a shine to it. Um, if you use brushes, you tend to get some brush strokes. You, you know, you can get by without doing it, but for me, it's just hit, easy hitting it with a, a rattle can on that. So, um, really, all we're going to do is take some silver. Um, we're going to drop it on here. We're going to take a big brush. I usually use a really, the, as big as brush as I have that I can control. So, you know, a, a one inch brush here or a, a three quarter inch, a half inch there. I'm going to use that. And what dry brushing technique is, you're basically putting paint on your brush, wiping most of it off, and hitting all the highlights. Just running it over all the highlights, and it's going to hit all that raised area, and that's what's going to give you that depth of field. Um, this is what I do instead of airbrushing. I played with airbrushes a couple times, but dry brushing allows me to do it at home. I, there's no cleanup, there's no nothing. I just need a cup of water since I don't drink coffee I use my monarch mug for my water thing and I just wash it out really good afterwards and I use a shot glass for my uh, washes so I have a little water in there that I'm going to use for making the ink and rusty color uh, to make it you know look older when I'm all done with it 
But first things first, I'm going to just take a silver and I'm just going to start dry brushing. So again, I'm just going to take my old silver, straight silver uh, paint that I had probably too long and I watered it down too long a long time ago, but it works perfect for this. So again, I'm going to use the biggest brush I have. I'm going to use this one inch brush. I'm going to get my brush wet like that. So my brush has got stuff on it and then I'm going to wipe it off and I'll try to move it over here and you can see I'm just going to wipe it off. And I don't have to be that careful. I can just kind of go like this and that's what I'm going to do with the whole kit. I'm going to do it over and over until everything is kind of hit from different angles. And that's dry brushing and that's what this paint job is really all about is just making sure everything kind of gets hit but not too hit. I guess you don't want to get the cracks you know too full. But since this is carbonate, we're going to be pretty, pretty generous on it. And we're just going to hit it hard. And we're going to keep painting. As you can see, sometimes I get a little heavy handed when I need to cover things. But that's okay too, because this is all going to be silver and steel. And again, I'm going to grunge it up with some rusty color too. Sometimes I can be a little heavy handed, especially on these side pieces. We're adding a little bit of texture. Doesn't hurt. Okay, so that takes care of that, and you can tell that it's pretty well covered. We've got a good silver base to it. It looks solid already. It feels solid because of the plaster in it. There's a little more plaster in here than I thought there would be. But I think that came out pretty nice. I think uh, you can see who it is, and um, you can tell that they're rivets and stuff, and it looks a lot more like rivets now that it's painted than it did before. So one thing I'm going to do now is just for the carbonite feel in here, I'm going to just add just a little bit of this kind of gold to the silver and just kind of go over this area. Um, try not to touch any of the side areas just to kind of give it just a little bit of color like carbonite's got its own thing going, but not a whole lot, just a faint touch of it. I'm going to hit them with uh, a little bit of rust maybe here and there as it drips off of here. But for the most part, I think we're really getting close to being done with our Frankenstein Monster and Carbonate. So before we rust things up, I'm going to kick the detail out really quick. And I'm just going to paint some white in there and add some red, I think, to that. And white in there, white in there. I want to paint this, these two knobs black. Uh, we'll paint this black and maybe this gold. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to do the outside yet or just do maybe gold rivets on these things just to add colors. I am going to add a couple half pearls to this like there's some buttons on this piece and we're going to add the big uh, red and blue half per, or red and green half pearl on here just for that. Um, and then we'll, we can rust it all out. This I might do some gold around the edges or just leave it the way it is. It's kind of like an exhaust pipe um, but I think just the fluids go through so either I can paint it or leave it alone but I think first thing I'm gonna to have to do is get some white and I'm gonna to have to paint the insides of those two little areas um, right here and right here and here before I start painting the rust colors out so I'm gonna get some white paint and a very small brush and I'm gonna start working on that There you go, there's a little bit of black on there, there's black there, and then there's black on this to give it that plastic look. So we're gonna take some gold, and I'm just gonna add those to these. So it just adds a little bit of different color to it, and that's kind of what I'm hoping for. And there, and then we got a little bit more detail. So all I really have to do now is do the dials and the uh, little monitor up here with the uh, black and red. 
or black and black if I wanted to, but I'm going to use, I think, red up here on there. I'm going to use black on here. And I can kind of leave it like that. I don't have to go really far with it. I'm still going to rust it out, and we'll see how that looks. I'm going to just add a little bit more detail and I know it could be detailed a little bit more but again this is just how far you want to take it that's the beauty about modeling so I did find that these are dry now so I'm going to take my white paint and I'm going to paint my my button uh, lines on it Oops. And move that guy over this way so I can see him and get a straight shot And that'll help with that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to glue on our little half pearls that I already painted. They uh, spray painted red and green. And while I was doing that, and just to be safe, I did a couple extras of both green and red. So if I do want to use some of the other colored ones on here, I can. So, but I'm going to start with the red and green, and I'm just going to use tacky glue on that. So I know I'm going to have a red and green right about here. And no matter what I do, this is going to dry clear, so I don't really care. I'm also going to put some tacky glue back on my paint thing. And that way I can dip some of the smaller ones in if I want to use them. I'm going to put red on top. And green on bottom. And push them around until I like them. And that will add that little color to the edge. Right there. If I can go with that. And then I can add some up here too. So I wanted to add a couple on this thing because there's just a little space here. So then with that, I can just use those ones, the extra ones I made. I can make a red and a green one. And then I had some clear ones. And these are little, little teeny things. So the tweezers is recommended. And the beauty about white glue is it's fairly invisible. So again, not to add a whole bunch of stuff, but I wanted to add a couple things just to make it look kind of a little more lit up, a little more cool, and a little more, you know, a little more sciency. So adding the detail is really your choice. I wanted to do a quick, simple little thing. So using the old model parts and these half pearls and some gears and pieces from other things, this wasn't too difficult to make and and you know that's what i was looking for is finding something around the house that i didn't have to look real hard for so i know i could go a lot further with this and make it look super cool but i wanted to do a real fast job and just you know i'm pretty happy with that and now i'm going to let everything dry and then we're going to add rust to everything i have my trusty shot glass and i'm going to mix a little terracotta in there i'm just going to put it right in the water I'm going to put just a dab of brown, dark brown, a dab of brown, and just a dab of black, just to, to make it really kind of a rusty, a darker color. Just, just a one drop in there. Not two. There we go. And again, if it gets too dark, it's too light, we'll just fix it up, you know, with whatever. So um, I'm going to stir it up and see what kind of mix I got. Mm, it's still a little bright. It's still a little, little... I want it just a little bit murkier. So let's put one more drop of black in there. There we go. And we're going to mix it up. There we go. Now it's a little darker there. So basically, this is a sloppy job. So what I like to do, though, is I like to have a kind of form in a way. So I, I'm going to hit the dots. I'm going to let them come down and kind of let them soak down. But I like to, to get the rivets each one because then the rust kind of appears around it and I can be sloppy because it's going to kind of rust down on me and I'm going to kind of force it down on me by you know letting gravity kind of deal with some of this rust issue we got it going so we're going to just add dots to each one of these and we can even just splash some around because it's really just going to be what it's going to be it's going to add a little bit of color it's going to make it look a little aged 
you know you can change your colors out that I've seen people do rust in multiple different ways again this is a simple weekend project if you want to take that one next step further I know I mentioned it a lot but that's kind of what modeling is I have buddies that you know take six months to do a, a piece and I'm trying to kick one out in a day so you kind of get the idea that you know you can take as much or as little time as you want if you're one of those hyperactive just get it on the shelf kind of guys I could totally understand that um, that's kind of where I'm at but I have a lot of respect for those people that can take the time to do a kit absolutely perfectly right um, you've seen them on monster model review we've had Mike Wallace and I know Mike takes his time and does some huge beautiful pieces um, if you want to check that out just check out the artist profiles I'm also going to hit a little of just this inside area where it's not quite carbonite but still kind of the casing I'm gonna hit a little bit of that and again I'm pretty sloppy doing this but it's gonna add some fun color to the to the whole thing it's gonna add like a red rust to it um, I'm gonna do it the whole side of it so I'm gonna hit these guys and this and I'm gonna hit what I just did all that work on I want to hit it I want to make it look older so I'm gonna just paint this right on it and let it kind of seep around it's going to just drip down and that's kind of what we want it to do we want it to look old and that's kind of what we're hoping for here so and that I think will be pretty much all we need to do to finish our project I'm going to let everything dry and I'll come back and we'll take some beauty shots when that's all done but I think we're pretty close to being finished with our Frankenstein in carbonate Well, there you go. You got Frankenstein Monster and Carbonite. And again, it only took about the weekend to do. Really, it's about dry time. If you didn't have to worry about the plaster drying or the glue drying or anything else drying, you could probably get this done in a day. Maybe if you got fans or heat, it'll, it, you could go faster. But it turned out pretty good. A lot similar to the Fink and Carbonite that I did a couple weeks ago. And it didn't cost very much to do. I used an old model kit, some plaster of Paris that I've had out in the garage for years. The only thing I really bought were the half pearls, and I really bought them for my per first kit, but they come in, you know, thousands of them. So I had a bunch of half pearls, and the pieces on the side were pieces from an old kit I had from the 70s that grew some goodies from the monster scenes. So I was able to cheat with that and use some of those half pearls and some washers and just stuff I found around the house to make it. Very inexpensive, very fun project. If you want to know more about Monster Model Review and see what we do, check us out at monstermodelreview.com. We have how-tos, artist profiles, and over 200 reviews. I've been your host, Rob Madison, and thanks for watching.